I'm going to try and not keep you too long. Let's go to Ephesians in chapter 4. Does anybody remember the title of my message last Sunday? The title of my message last Sunday was Grow Up. So let's go to Ephesians chapter 4 again. And reading from verse 11 down to verse 16. It says, and he himself, that is Jesus, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. For the equipping of the saints, so these ministry gifts, as we call them, have been given for a purpose, and the purpose is for the equipping of the saints. Some translations say, like if you've got an older translation, it would say, for the perfecting of the saints. Don't let that word perfect disturb you. A lot of times we withdraw from that because we think, well, nobody's perfect. But what it means is for the equipment, for the maturing of the saints. Why do the saints need to be uh, mature? Why do they need to be growing up? For the work of the ministry. And then it says, for the edifying or the building of the body of Christ. Verse 13, till we all come to the unity of the faith. And of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man. Again, don't let that word disturb you. To a mature man, to a grown man, to a completed man. To the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we should no longer be children. Why don't you just say that after me? That we should no longer be children. Let's say that again. That we should no longer be children. Tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love. This is where our title comes from. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, that is Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. My text, like I've said, comes from verse 15, but speaking the truth in love. Speaking the truth in love, not speaking our opinions in love, but speaking the word of God, speaking truth over one another, speaking that which builds, speaking that which edifies, speaking that which ministers grace in love so that we may grow up in all things into him, that is, into Jesus. Growing up. Growing up spiritually. As a church, we should not be just committed to having church on a Sunday. We should be committed to growing. As a congregation, yes, but especially as individuals. God wants us to grow. I don't think we, we have time to play games as Christians. I don't think we have time to play games as a church. I don't think we should have an agenda to try and impress people. If anyone needs to be impressed, I think it's the Lord that needs to be impressed with our lives. We're not about impressing people. We're about pleasing him. And I believe God wants us and he needs us to grow up. But I believe he needs us to grow up quickly. Because time really is short. And a lot of work needs to be done. One of the things, if you've been part of New Generation Church for any length of time, you'll have heard me say that we want to create an environment where each person can grow and fulfill their God-given potential. So my question to you is, can you grow? Can you increase in your knowledge of the things of God? Can you increase in your capacity? Can you increase in your usefulness to the Lord? I believe the answer is yes. And we need to say that confidently. Can we become more and more like Jesus? What well, I don't believe any of us have arrived, so the answer is is yes. Do we need to grow? Do you need to grow? 
And the answer again is yes, we do need to grow. I need to grow. You need to grow. Grown-ups get to do things little babies don't. Grown-ups get to enjoy things little children don't enjoy. Grown-ups get responsibilities that you can't give to a child. What are we supposed to grow up to be like? This text makes it very clear that every single one of us are to grow up to become more and more like Jesus. And, you know, we, we, we've just dedicated harmony. And, you know, there may come a time in life where people say to harmony, you're just like your mother. Or say to Zion, you're just like your father. Well, that, that would be a compliment. People used to say to me, I used to travel and, uh, a lot more and, and preach and visit some of the churches that my dad used to preach. And, and every now and then people would say, Aaron, when you did that and when you extended your hand, because my dad had really long hands and really long arms, and they said, when you said that, when you did that, you looked just like your dad. Well, I took that as a compliment, but just because in some ways I was like my father and just because Harmony in some ways is like a mother or Zion like his father doesn't mean any of us have arrived because the goal for all of us should be to become more like Jesus. Amen. And I, and I could be the, the exact image of my father, but that doesn't mean I've arrived because he too was on a journey. As long as he was here on planet, he was on a journey to become more and more like Jesus. That's a high calling. And a lot of times we look at Jesus and Kieran brought an, an amazing word a few weeks ago, Jesus is enough. And he challenged us. There was a challenge in his message because he closed by enforcing the fact that we're to grow to become like him. These verses stress that also. Look at verse 13. It says, Till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Verse 15 says, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. Remember Matthew 5 verse 48, Jesus in that great sermon on the mount, he said, be perfect. As, be perfect therefore, just as your heavenly father is perfect. Who said this? Jesus said this. He, he was talking to people just like you and just like me. And he was saying, be perfect just as your father is perfect. Luke 6 and verse 40, a disciple is not above his teacher. But everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. Amen. Amen? Notice, everyone who is perfectly trained. And that's what church life is all about. That's why... We have Sunday services. That's why we have small groups. That's why we, we try the best we can to do life with one another because it's part of our training to be like our teacher. Romans 8 verse 29 says, For whom he foreknew, he also predestined. This is not something God is coming up with you, uh, for your life as you go along. It's something that has pre been predestined for every single one of us. For whom he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. First John chapter 4 and verse 17. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Listen to John 14 and verse 12. Jesus said to his followers, to his disciples, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these will he do, because I go to my Father. Wow. Aren't these astonishing words? These words that sometimes you have to let bypass your mind. Because your mind cannot comprehend the fact that God wants us to be just like Jesus. And that Jesus said to his disciples, and he's saying to us, the works that I do, the works that I did, you will do also, and greater works than these will you do because I go to the Father. Think about that for a moment. 
Think about the words that Jesus spoke. And ask yourself, how much like Jesus am I? How do my words match his words? How does my prayer life relate and connect to his prayer life? How does my faith, how does my response to adversity relate to his response to adversity? Jesus said, the works that I do, you will do also. How much like Jesus are you? Anyone 100%? 90%? Who'll give me 80? I'm asking for 75. Anybody give me 75? 50%. Anybody 50% like Jesus? 40% like Jesus? How many of you think you've got a long way to go? We've got a long way to go. When people look at you, do they ask the question, are you a Christian? Or do they say, you call yourself a Christian? Are you with me? Uh, there's a lady I know at a church I used to visit. And um, she got into a lift at a hospital. Complete stranger there were several people, but a complete stranger got in the lift and just looked at her and said, are you one of those Christians? Wouldn't you just love that to be said about you? I believe we, God wants us to represent him well. I believe he wants us to represent Jesus well. But all of us must recognize a personal need for change. And that we do need to grow up. And you understand that we're talking about growing up spiritually. We've grown up, most of us in this room have grown up physically. Um, By the grace of God, I'm not going to get bigger, too much bigger. I'm not going to get any taller. I don't believe I'm going to get any taller. I mean, Marie did compliment me. She said, you look like you put weight on yesterday. And then she asked me this morning, she had the nerve to ask me this morning, do I look like I've lost weight? What's a man supposed to say? (laughs) I'm not talking about growing physically. I'm talking about growing up spiritually. Now, I suppose all of us um, need to grow up emotionally. Uh, And, you know, growing up in our mind, and, and, and I think all of us should be lifelong learners, increasing our mental capacity. But I'm talking about growing up spiritually because you are a spirit being. When you, when you were born again, you didn't have a religious experience. You had a spiritual experience. You see, we live in a world where, where well, let me say this. Man's threefold nature is spirit, soul, and body in that order. Spirit, soul, and body. But we live in a world where people's bodies control them. Or people's minds, their souls, their reasoning faculties, their emotions control them and that's what we were like before we came to Christ but when we came to Christ if you like there there was or there should have been a shift in our center of gravity I can't think of a better way to put that but there should have been a shift in our center of gravity that the center of our lives is is not how we feel physically it's not how we feel emotionally but it's who we are spiritually That is our new center of gravity. And the goal of the Christian life is to constantly make that shift in every area of our life from our body controlling us or our emotions or our human thinking controlling us to what God has done on the inside to control us. And so when we talk about growing up spiritually, when Paul talked to the Ephesians, and they were adults, they were mature people, they were fully grown, mums and dads and, uh, and men and women, But he was talking to them, when he talked to them about growing up, he was talking about growing spiritually. Psalm 8 verse 4 says, What what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? Man is different from the animal world. Amen? Man is different from the animal world. He's not an animal like the rest of creation is. Man is a spirit being. God created all the animals and then he said, let us make man in our own image. So man is a spirit being. 
And when we talk about growing up, we have to talk about, we have to be aware that we, we, we need to grow up spiritually. Evolution is a lie. Evolution is incompatible with the Bible. Amen? Man did not evolve out of something that came out of the sea or, or the like. Man was created by God, a spirit being who lives in a physical body, who has a mind and a will and emotions and is created to know God. Grown up spiritually. Last week we saw that spiritually we can be babes in Christ. We can be children. John said, I, I, I'm writing to you little children. He also said, I'm writing to you young men. And he said, I'm writing to you fathers. So spiritually, we can be babes. We can be children. We can be young men or women. Spiritually, we can be fathers and mothers. I want to talk about babies. There was no collusion. The fact that we have a baby dedication service just happens to have worked this way. But I want to talk about babies. Do we have any babies in the room? See, nobody's saying, yeah, this is for me. <laughs> Isn't that right? Nobody's saying, yep, I need my Bible. I need to get my notebook out because grow up baby is for me. And that's the title of my message. Grow up baby. <laughs> you see, the beginning of progress is to be honest with ourselves. The beginning of progress is to be honest with ourselves. Children like to pretend, don't they? They like to pretend there's something that they're not. The fact is, spiritually, when we are born again, we are spiritual babes. So how do we know if this applies? How do I know if this applies to me? Grow up baby. First of all, if the title upsets me, then I know it applies to me. Are you with me? If the title upsets me, then I know this applies to me. Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. He was thinking, even though he was religious, he was thinking physically, how can I go back into my mother's womb and be born? Jesus said, no, I'm not talking about physical rebirth. I'm talking about a spiritual rebirth. And just like every person on the planet has been born a baby, when we are born again spiritually, we are born babes in Christ. But there are two types of babe. Now we're talking about spiritual babies, but there are genuine spiritual babies. And then there are carnal babies. Are you with me? There are spiritual babes and there are carnal babies babes. Some of the characteristics of babies that we need to continue, that we need to keep, is that aspect of innocence. Isn't that right? Just staying in, innocent. Another characteristic of babies is they are growing. We need to keep that characteristics. They are learning. They're getting stronger. We need to keep that. And your know, spiritual babes are teachable. They're hungry and have a desire to grow. Let's, let's see some characteristics about babies. Babies are cute. Isn't that right? Babies are cute. Babies bring a lot of joy. We love babies. We do not claim 
complain when babies act like babies. Amen? We do not complain when babies act like babies. Babies cry. Babies burp. And it's okay. Babies need to be cuddled. Babies need to be comforted. Babies live in a very small world. Which goes from about here to about here. Isn't that right? Babies live in a very small world that they are the center of. Are you with me? Babies cannot do anything for themselves. Babies need everything to be done for them. Babies are easily upset. Babies can't do anything for themselves. Babies don't do anything for themselves. Babies are emotional. They are happy and they are sad. And they're happy and they're sad. And then they don't know. Am I supposed to be happy or sad? I don't know. This is normal for a baby. But if you put that baby in a 20-year-old body or a 30-year-old body or a 40 and a 50 or a 60-year-old body and that baby lives with a very small world that they are the center of and that baby doesn't do anything for themselves and that baby doesn't do anything for anyone else then you have a problem. Babies don't cry, but babies cry and they don't stop until they get what they want. Babies don't care what time it is. They're not thinking about mum. Sorry, was I disturbing you? Is that right? They're not thinking about mum. They're not thinking about what they've just put their mother through. They don't care what time it is. They don't care where they are. They don't care who they're with. Congratulations, Mark and Danielle, on, <laughs> <laughs> on the good news that you're expecting. <laughs> if the baby feels it, you will know it. Babies don't get hungry and patiently bear it. Is that right? Babies don't pass the food and think, I'm not moved by how I feel. They are very moved by how they feel. Isn't that right? Babies are not patient, babies are impatient. Babies like to vent. They need to be burped. They need to be cuddled. Babies don't care about you. They care about how you make them feel. I'm not feeling the love this morning. <laughs> Is any of this registering? They care about how you make them feel. The babies need to be weaned. One of the things that came out in our connect group this week was there is this term for some babies where they fail to thrive. And uh, one of the comments that was made was that if somebody was referring to a family member and they were a bit concerned because the baby didn't seem to be thriving and um, some of that's due to a lack of stimulation 
But in this occasion, it was because you are doing everything for the child. And you need to allow them to do some things for themselves. You see, we, as parents, we know that. The, the, the we're, not, we're not raising big babies who grow up never to be able to do anything for themselves. Isn't that right? We're not raising up babies who can't take care of themselves and babies who can't take of anybody, care of anybody else. We are raising sons and daughters to be able to look after themselves and to have a heart that is expansive enough to serve and to care for somebody else. And the comment was made that by the doctor that you, you're doing everything for the child. Let them do some stuff for themselves. Spiritual babes can't do anything for themselves. Genuine spiritual babes. Carnal babes don't do anything for themselves. Babies want you to solve all their problems. And our difficulty is, is as we are growing in the knowledge of God's word, more actually is required of us. And if we do not develop and grow spiritually, and instead continue to rely on others, if we spiritually rely on mum and dad to do, or, or, or others, our, our spouse, or our connect group, or our pastors to do all our praying for us, and all our believing for us, sooner or later, we're going to stop getting results because God actually expects more of us. We can make excuses, friends, or we can make progress, but we can't make both. Is this all right for you this morning? Yeah. If we're serious about serving the Lord, and you know, just like in a natural home, you expect young adults, children, teens, to start to carry some of the weight of the house. Yeah. And if we're serious about our walk with the Lord, about growing and increasing in our usefulness to Him, and carrying some of the weight of the house, then we need to be intentional about growing up spiritually. So I close this sermon. We've still got 10, 15 minutes, but 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2. Paul writes and he says, as new, uh, sorry, Peter writes and he says, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. We have two types of babes. I'll say that again. We have spiritual babes and we have carnal babes. So spiritual babes, two characteristics here. They desire the sincere milk of the word of God. Number two, they intend to grow. Spiritual babes, genuine spiritual babes have a hunger for God's word. You know of a natural child, if they lose their appetite, something's wrong. I mean, if any of us lose our appetite, something's wrong. Spiritual babes, if they lose their appetite, something's wrong. If you have no hunger for God's word, something's wrong. If you have no desire, if there's no leaning factor to God's word, something's wrong. Spiritual babes have a hunger. They have a desire for the pure milk of God's word, the word of God. And number two, spiritual babes grow by applying that word to themselves, to their own lives, and putting it into practice. This is why in our, in our small groups, in our connect groups, one of the questions, in fact, the, probably the only question, everything springs from that, is what was your one thing from Sunday's message? Because that's potentially the area that God wants you to grow in that you need to deal with. Spiritual babes, carnal babes on the other hand. Hebrews chapter five, verse 11 to 14. It says of whom, he's just the writer, he's just talking about Melchizedek, this character from the Old Testament. And he says of whom we have much to say and hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. Dull means slothful. It means to be slow, sluggish, dull, languid, lazy in hearing. We have this kind of whatever attitude towards the word of God or the things of God. The Bible says the natural man doesn't receive the things of the spirit of God because they're foolishness to him. Paul said we, or the writer here says we have so many things to say but we 
can't say it because you have become, you've become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers. And you see, this is the thing about carnal babes. They ought to be something more. There ought to be more coming from their lives. There ought to be fruit. There ought to be evidence of change and transformation. Are you with me? For by this time, you ought to be teachers. You ought to be telling somebody else about Jesus. You ought to be encouraging other people in the word. I remember being in the church once and uh, uh, very familiar with the people. And there was a guy there who was in his 60s. And during the time that I'd got to know him, uh, I had known, and, and he was recent to that church. He'd been in that church about 18 months and I, and I got to know that he was brought up in church. He, his earliest memories were of going to church. He had a godly uh, parents. Uh, from my understanding, he was filled with the Holy Spirit at an early age. And uh, you know, God used him in gifts of the Spirit. And he would bring words of knowledge and bring words of prophecy. And he said, you know, Aaron, I've, I've been in this church for 18 months. And I've never had a visit from the pastor. And I'll I'll be honest with you, my thought was, after 60 years of Pentecost, after all those decades of learning God's word, why aren't you visiting somebody else? Are you with me? Why aren't you looking for someone else to help? Why aren't you looking to come alongside somebody else and encourage them? Why aren't you praying for other people? Why aren't you raising up the next generation? Why is it that the pastor has to come and see you, a man who's been brought up in the house of God for 60 years, and by this time you ought to be ministering to others? Why is it that you need somebody to come and visit you? You see, what Ephesians 4 tells us about the body of Christ is that it, it works Differently, it's supposed to work differently than what tradition tells us. Because tradition tells us that it's a few people at the front who do all the work. It's a few people at the front that do all the, all the pastoral care. It's a few people at the front who do all the praying, who do all the believing, who do all the, all the visitation. But actually, what Ephesians 4 tells us is that we're all supposed to be involved. Amen? We're all supposed to be looking at who can I help? Who can I support? Who can I encourage? Who can I strengthen? You ought to be teachers. You need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God and have become to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. It means those who mature. That is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. In closing, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Is this all right for you this morning? Not too tough to chew on. But we all understand the message. That spiritually there are babes. And there are those who are genuine spiritual babes. But sadly, there are those who ought to be more like Jesus. Amen? Who ought to be stepping out and helping somebody else. Who ought to be praying for other people. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Paul said, to the Corinthian church. And this this amazes me because the Corinthian church seemed to excel in what we call gifts of the Spirit. But they were quite possibly the most carnal of all the churches that Paul had to deal with. Paul said, And I, brethren, could not speak to you. Think about that for a moment. This is the great apostle Paul. This is the pioneer, the greatest pioneer of the early church. This is the the one who had third heaven revelation, who wrote probably two-thirds of the New Testament epistles. 
And he says to the Corinthian church, I could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal. And then he brings some clarity on what he means by carnal. He says, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food. For until now you are not able to receive it. And even now you are still not able. For you are still carnal. What does that mean? You're still babes in Christ. This church was several years old. And it's not like these believers are 20, 30 years old. They were several years old. You see, growing up spiritually doesn't have to be the same pace-wise or time-wise as growing up naturally. I believe God can grow us up quickly. Amen. I believe he wants us to grow up quickly. He said, I fed you with milk and not with solid food for you were not able to receive it. And even now you are still not able for you are still carnal. You are still babes in Christ. He says, for where there is envy and strife and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? These Christians filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking with other tongues. That's not a shortcut to growing up spiritually. He says, you're behaving like mere men. One translation says, people who aren't even Christians. For when one says, I'm of Paul, and another, I'm of Apollos, and if you read the early chapters, there were those who said, no, we, we, we like Peter, we like Paul. Others said, we like Apollos. There were those who thought they were more spiritual than all of them, said, no, we just love Jesus, it's all Jesus. But if they're using that to put others down, it's not spiritual at all. Paul says, why you have this preference for speakers, why you have this preference, you've got your favorite preacher, are you not carnal? You see, a lot of the things I talked about were characteristics of carnal babes who can't do, won't do anything for anyone else. But here, Paul says, carnality means, you, you, the spiritual babyhood means your feelings control you. You're carnal, your flesh ruled, your, your physical impulses, your physical desires, your, your physical appetites control you. Your emotions control you. You cannot be fine-tuned spiritually and completely all over the place emotionally. You can't be developed spiritually and ruled by your flesh, your appetites. Are you with me? It doesn't work that way. Babes can't do anything for themselves. They don't do any for themselves. Paul says, I, I couldn't give you solid food from God's word because you can't handle it. Babes can't handle much. Babes can't handle much. And then another characteristic here, and we've, we've run out of time. Paul says, babes, keep falling out with people. Keep falling out with one another. There was strife, there was division, there was envy amongst them. Amen? Jesus' prayer was that we might be one, that we might be united, that we might value his work in one another, see what he's done, rather than what causes us to differ. Have you got the message this morning? Maybe not for everybody. But I dare say that for all of us, there are some areas where we need to grow in the Lord. Step out a bit. We might be more developed in some areas than others, but all of us have something that we need to grow out of so that we can be the men and women that God wants us to be. And God wants us to be men and women. He wants us to step into things that only people who have grown in the Lord can handle. He wants to use us in ways where only people who are mature in the things of God can do things. See that he gets honoured and Jesus is glorified. Amen and amen. Father, we just want to say thank you for your word. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. 
Thank you, when the lights are turned on, we are illuminated and we see the way that we should go, but we also become aware of the things that would cause us to stumble. And I pray for all of us that we won't just be hearers of the word, but it would be like a mirror that we stand before. We're not looking at anyone else. Your word paints a picture. And your spirit is prompting our hearts. This is the way you need to walk in it. I pray for the people that Christ might be formed in them. In Jesus' name. We're going to receive communion in a moment before we do. I just want to give people in the room and those of you that are watching online an opportunity to connect with Jesus in a way that you haven't before. The Bible says you must be born again. You must give ownership of your life to Jesus. He is Lord. Have you given ownership of your life to Jesus? Have you invited him into your heart? The Bible says now is the time. Today is the day of salvation. I want to lead you in a prayer that you can repeat after me. But it may be that there are others who are like the prodigal son. And there was a time when you were in the father's house, but life happened. And sometimes people fall out of love with other Christians because Christians sometimes are babies spiritually. And they say things and they do things that do not represent Jesus well. But, you know, we just translate that into a way that we take it out on Jesus. We take it out on his church. And maybe that's happened to you and something happened and you disconnected from church, you disconnected from Jesus. Well, like the prodigal right now, this morning, you want to come back home. I want to lead you in prayer also. So all heads are bowed in, in the room and Christians, let's pray. Would you repeat these words after me? Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you are God's son, that you died for my sin. You were buried for three days. But God raised you from the dead so that I could have eternal life, so that I could be born again. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I receive you as Savior and I confess you as Lord. Jesus, I'm like that prodigal who went away, but I wanted to come back home. I ask you to forgive me. I know you will accept me. From this moment forward, I belong to you. Help me to grow. Help me to become more like you every day of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, we would love to hear from you. Why don't you tell us if you're in the room, but if you're online, go to our website and send us an email. We'd love to help you in any way that we can. Let's receive communion now. You've got the emblems uh, on your seat. They're available. Jesus did so much for us. He paid such a sacrifice. And you know, growing up is hard. Growing up is difficult. Growing up is challenging. There's so much that you have to let go in order to step into the new thing that God has for us. And you know, this wasn't easy for Jesus. He left the glory and the splendor of heaven. He left perfection and came to live amongst sinful men, rub shoulders with them. But he did it. And as, as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, I just want to ask you in your heart, make the commitment that God, nothing is too difficult for me, for me when it comes to serving you. Nothing is too great a price to pay when I consider the price that you paid. He cried with so much anguish. God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? If he did that for us, is anything too much for him? I don't believe so. So, Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for his great love. Thank you for his great sacrifice. And, Father, you allowed him 
you sent him. And it cost you just like it cost him. Father, I pray that we would have eternity in mind. Just be conscious of the time when we would stand before you and give an account for our lives. When we would stand before Jesus who is scarred from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Help us not to pursue a life of ease. Not to pursue a life of comfort. But a life of service. To become more like Jesus, I pray. In his name. Amen and amen. Why don't you just make that commitment as you eat and as you drink. Amen. Amen. Well, let's stand up as we sing our last song. Let's go out with a shout. Amen. In Jesus' name.